I'm joined by Elizabeth Cochran, who is a PhD student here at OSU in integrative biology. And Elizabeth is studying bluebirds, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which OSU's done a lot of bluebird research, but you've got something unique. Can you tell us a little bit about your research? Yeah, so I look at the health and disease of our eastern bluebirds, and specifically I look at how parents can affect their offspring. So essentially, you know, how are the parents bettering their babies for know a later life adulthood we hear about this in humans right <laughs> exactly so it makes sense that we're seeing this maybe in bluebirds as well yes. so how do you go about evaluating that relationship between a parent and the baby yeah so eastern bluebirds are what we call altricial nestlings which means that they are fully reliant on their parents for everything from you know making sure that they're warm enough and also through feeding so i check up on the nestlings a few times during the two weeks that they're in the nest. And you've got a lot of boxes around the city, yes. right? So mainly around Stillwater here. Yes, I have over 200 nest boxes here in Stillwater. Okay, so you're watching those nests. You mm -hmm. finally see the eggs. How do you know? Because I feel like sometimes I'm looking <laughs> and then all of a sudden they're just gone. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so I check those nest boxes twice a week. So I make sure I don't miss anything. And as soon as the first egg is laid, I come back every day until there's two consecutive days of the same number of eggs. Bluebirds typically lay about four to six eggs in one clutch okay. and then from there I let the mom incubate her eggs for about two weeks or so and once those babies hatch I come back on day 5, 11, and 14 just to monitor them and also collect a blood sample and measure them. Okay so you're collecting a blood sample not mm -hmm. harmful to the babies or not anything at all. like that. You're Very taking small that, blood. <laughs> <laughs> you're taking that from um, the babies? Mm -hmm. Okay and then um, tell us a little bit about some of the other aspects that you're of data collection that you're taking as well. Yeah, so I'm very busy with data collection and I like to take a whole nest approach <laughs> so to make sure that, you know, I'm not missing anything. Mm -hmm. And what I do is I look at them on day five and I take a small blood sample to see if the mother is possibly giving her babies any antibodies, which is just a protein essentially mm -hmm. that is really beneficial for the offspring to make sure that they're primed and can fight off an infection. So how do you know that maybe is coming from the mother? Do you take samples from the mother as well? Or? Yes. Okay. I uh, get samples from both the mother and the father, okay. and I'm able to collect a blood sample from them as well, and I identify them using metal bands as well as color bands that are used to help identify them in the field. Okay, all right. So when you've collected this from the babies, um, you're then analyzing the data. Is there any other collections that you're doing, um, like uh, swabs or anything else? Yeah, so I also, I take a swab to their clonal cleft, which is just- What is that? <laughs> yeah, so that's just the roof of their mouth, okay. essentially. And from there, I'm looking for an active infection of Mycoplasma gallisepticum. Okay. It's a really big, scary word. <laughs> um, I'll refer to it as MG from here on out, but it's a bacterial pathogen that affects mostly chickens and house finches. Okay. Uh, Conjunctivitis is the swelling of the eyes and through nasal discharge, and those two species typically get those disease symptoms, but over 50 species of birds also get MG, but we're unsure on how they're being affected by the disease. So what I'm doing in particular with my bluebirds is I'm looking to see whether or not this disease is taking any toll on their plumage coloration. Mm. You know, I like much of the rest of the population love birds for all their plumage. Right, you right. Know, the, Which is important for them for breeding and everything else later on. Yeah, birds also love plumage. <laughs> you know, it plays a really big role in sexual selection. And right. so, you know, if a bird is diseased and has duller plumage, they might not be able to successfully reproduce that following year. Okay, all right. So yeah. you've got a few samples of some other um, data collection things here. Yes. Tell me about this. Yes, so I take feathers from nestlings and adults in order to test for that plumage coloration. Mm -hmm. And I take one tail feather, eight feathers from their chestnut breast region, as well as eight feathers from their blue rump region. Okay. And I use this really <laughs> fancy uh, technology called a spectrophotometer that is able to measure the wavelengths of all of these segments. Oh. And from there, I can get a pretty good picture of the quality of the individual. Oh, interesting. So these mm -hmm. are off of the babies the, yes. the, that are in there and you... 
Um, and so as one, these look a little different. Can you tell me about that? Yes, so bluebirds are sexually dimorphic, which means that the males look different than the females. And we can see that as soon as day 14, you know, when they start growing in their feathers. So over here, I have a male nestling. You can really see the really distinct blue on this feather right here. And that's a tail feather? Is that... Yes, okay. and this is a tail feather. And then for the tail feather of the female, it'll still be blue, but you can see that it's a lot duller. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it almost mm -hmm. looks a little black towards the end there. Yeah. So this is interesting. So you've been doing this for how many years have, of data do you have? Yeah, so in Oklahoma, I have two years of data, but okay. I've been doing this since 2021. Okay, all right. Yeah. And so you're doing one more year of data collection after this? Yes. Okay, and then what's, what's ultimately, obviously it's gonna help us learn a little bit more about mm -hmm. their immune and um, uh, system and how they're passing on those potential antibodies mm -hmm. or pathogens, right? Yes. Um, how is that going to help us later on with other birds as well? Yeah, so uh, there's this approach to uh, health that I like to really use. It's called One Health, mm -hmm. and it's the fact that in order to have healthy humans, we also have to have healthy environment and animals because everything is ultimately connected. Mm -hmm. So being able to see how pathogens are affecting our wildlife can really give us a broader picture of how to really help our humans and our environment. Very good, very good. Interesting work. And um, I guess you've gotten a lot of data also because we heard a few years ago yes. that the population had kind of declined after our deep freeze that we had here. Yes. Are so, you seeing that still <laughs> as evidence in the in your nest boxes or? Yeah, so thankfully we've seen a, a really big boom in our bluebird population. Back in 2021, over 90% of the bluebirds died in due to the freeze mm -hmm. but in 2025 I have so many bluebirds <laughs> in the uh, past month that they have been breeding I have 47 active uh, nests wow. which is really awesome to so, see at least here in Stillwater the population <laughs> seems to have recovered yes fantastic well thank you Elizabeth for sharing your research with us of course thank you We hope you enjoyed this video as part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on the OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.